I'm Bruce A. Parr, and you're watching Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog. Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog is brought to you by Chase Media Group, publisher of The Penny Saver and provider of multimedia marketing solutions for an omnichannel marketplace. And we thank our CEO, Carla Chase, and our Chief Strategic Officer, Frank J. Rich, for producing the show and bringing us to you. Uh, and Frank also is my occasional co-host who cannot be here uh, for this session. And Frank Talks with Bruce the Blog is a community affairs show, as we like to describe it, uh, that focuses on very interesting people in the community making unique contributions to our quality of life. And you can see all the previous shows, by the way, on YouTube by searching for TownLink TV. Uh, and it's always fun to welcome back somebody. And uh, Rosemary Panio, who is our guest, uh, I, I, I look back into the archives, Rose, so to speak, and it was almost exactly two years ago yep. that, that you were on. And I would have never guessed that it was that long ago. I would have thought it was more recently, but maybe because I see you a lot yes. around town and, and the various organizations that we both belong to. And one of those is the foundation board of the Hudson Valley Hospital Center. Yes. Uh, and coming up is your sort of your pet project, so to speak, uh, as the chairperson of the Wine and Dine Around the World, which is the wine tasting fundraiser. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and last year it was, the theme was Savor the Mediterranean, and this year it's Welcome to Napa. Right. Um, and so why don't you just describe the, uh, the wine tasting event? It's really grown tremendously in the yes, last few years. it has. This will be our fourth event, and we have it at uh, Trump National Golf Course in Briarcliff. It's a wonderful venue. It's a beautiful place to, uh, to see. And we offer wines from around the world. We have wonderful food from area restaurants. Yeah, how, how many contribute. restaurants? Are, well, how many? usually around 25 yeah. are there. Some of them are actually cooking at the time. Others provide the food. We have incredible wines from around right. the world. I mean, wines from Europe, from South America. Uh, this year we're featuring Napa Valley. We're, we're doing that. We try to change something up every year. Right. We have a little different emphasis. But it's a wonderful wine experience. They're absolutely incredible. Um, the food is, people come from as far away as New York City right. uh, to uh, restaurants from New York City. Uh, so it's a wonderful, it's just a wonderful event. And of course, it's for a very good cause. And the proceeds go to the Hudson Valley Hospital Center Foundation, specifically for the Ashikari Breast Center which uh, is a wonderful organization, yeah. and we try to support it as much as we can. Uh, our proceeds last year went to uh, a symposium to bring together uh, the various oncologists and surgeons and medical professionals um, who could discuss, uh, have a, some time together to discuss the best ways or what they have uh, demonstrated, has been demonstrated to them to be a better way of caring for cancer patients. So we're very happy about that. And it's $100 a person to attend, right. $80 of which is tax deductible. So you're going to get a wonderful evening of great food, incredible wine, and also you're going to have a tax deduction as well. So. And by the way, uh, meet a lot of people or maybe meet a lot of friends and, right. and people that you don't know. Um, but then, oh, last year, how many? Uh, 300 or more we than 300? We had about almost 400 Almost 400 year, people, yeah. yeah. Uh, and of course, 
that Trump uh, room that it's in is so big, you don't have to worry about being crowded. Absolutely or, not. It's I mean, a wonderful venue. Yeah, it's, it's a, a great venue. venue. And, and another wrinkle that's being added this year in the beverage department is that you're not going, or we're not going, because I'm on the foundation board with you and the committee with you. Uh, and we're not going to have just wine. Right? No, that's true. We have decided to invite some microbreweries, right. which we will feature. And we have a couple of vodka companies that do come. They have come in the right. past. And we will actually have someone there demonstrating this year on how to use the vodka, make various drinks with vodka. But our, our primary focus is on wines, the wines of the world. Right. So it's, it's just a great event. We uh, enjoy it tremendously. We have people pouring. It's a tasting. Right. So we encourage people to taste throughout the room. Yes and not necessarily drink the wines uh, if they want to taste a lot of them. We just encourage them to taste and, and to savor all of the food that's there from around the world. Incredible uh, dishes. I myself will make a pesto that night for uh, my, my friends who like pesto genovese. Right. I've always done that, so I will do that. And of course, Rocco will be pouring Right. And he, uh, people love to see him because, as you know, we were in business, in the wine business, for 40 yeah, years. In Peekskill. Right? In Peekskill. Yeah. And so he has a lot of fans, and he loves to talk about wine. So um, it's just a great night. It's a great evening. Well, and, and in that vein, it's a great place for people to learn about wine. Yes, it's absolutely. It's almost a wine course. If yeah. You, if you ask the questions, uh, there'll be someone there to answer them. Right. No, and I've always found in, in the years that I've been going that it's, I think I've been gone, I think I've gone every year, that the, uh, the restaurateurs who go there and the people from the wine stores are extremely willing um, and generous in sharing their expertise. Absolutely. You know, that's, that's one of the best things about mm -hmm. it. And in years past, I don't know if we're doing it this year actually, but I know in years past people could also uh, buy wine, yes. right? buy bottles of wine. Mm -hmm. um, at, at, a, at a pretty favorable price. Yes, they, um, they can buy cases of wine. Are we doing that again? We're this doing, year? I yeah. think, half cases and right. cases, and of course the proceeds. This is directly with the stores that are providing the wines. Right. But they are going to donate the proceeds to the breast care center. Right, which is really yes, nice. Which yeah. is really nice as well. So. Yeah. And the last time we had you on, Rose, uh, you talked about actually the book that we have here, again, Celebrate Italy, uh, a cookbook. Um, because that's certainly one of your passions is yes. is Italian cooking. Uh, and uh, do you have something else coming up in the way of any uh, published works that we should know about? Well, we're going to, I'm going to start formally working on, it's in my head, and I've collected a lot of information, but we are going to produce, when I say we, my husband and I. Rocco. Uh, a, yeah, Rocco, right. yes, a, a wine book. Uh, it'll be about Italy, basically and the areas right above Italy or around it that also uh, produce some of the wines that we're very fond of. So we're going to uh, work on that next year. Oh, great. And hope to have it um, acquaint people with the, the culture of the wine, not just the wine itself, but the right. whole culture around it, the cities, the towns that produce certain wines, and why certain foods uh, go with those wines, because that's what they produce there as well. Yeah, that would, that would so be really interesting. I happen for, to be yeah. a map lover, so right. <laughs> I, I go into that in great detail, much more than Rocco thinks I should, but um, it's, it's a wonderful uh, history lesson as well, a geography right. lesson, a history lesson, a history of uh, a lesson about people's cultures and what they grew in their areas and why those, those foods complement the wines right. and vice versa. So, I mean, to us, it's... It was our work for 40 years, but it's, it's our hobby as well, so right. we enjoy it very much. So, so it's really the backstory right, of wines, which, I mean, I, I know speaking of somebody who, who enjoys wine myself, that um, I think it would, it would allow you to appreciate the wine more, I mean, and actually appreciate the taste of the wine Absolutely. more if you understand the logic of its genealogy, of That's where it's right. coming from, That's and right. that it's not just some random right, beverage that, that has no connection to literally its roots, right, yep. its roots in the ground. Absolutely, and, yeah. absolutely. Um, and so uh, you would just recently, as you, as you are wont to do every year, uh, conducting some research, weren't you, uh, yeah. on your native soil. <laughs> yes. uh, um, uh, and you were in Italy for how long? Uh, we cut it short this year. We were there just for about a month. 
But it's usually you're there for how long? Usually there been? for two months. Two months. Yes, since we've retired, yes. Right. But, and you have a lot of relatives there. All there. Of, almost all of our relatives, except for yeah. my children and grandchildren, all of our relatives are over there. And, and you were sharing with me, Rose, how just some of the sociology of uh, contemporary Italy, uh, some of which is very disturbing. Uh, as, is. as unfortunately we become uh, used to, or I shouldn't say we're used to it, but we're too overly familiar with around the world a lot of the problems that are going on in the world of, of various uh, sorts. Um, I mean, things like unemployment, obviously it's not unique to, to the United States. Yes, oh no. Um, and, and you were telling me that in Italy the unemployment rate among a certain uh, age segment is really alarming, right? It's, Very uh, alarming, 42%. Yeah. Yes. yeah, which, I mean, I remember I was recently watching something, a uh, documentary on TV about the Depression, and the unemployment during the Depression was 25%. So you're talking about 42. Among, right? among 35, 40-year-olds, uh, that, that age group, yes. Unfortunately, an entire generation of people have not had a work experience. At all? At all. Wow. They're very well educated, um, but um, they have not had the... Well, because a lot of the companies leave the country for a more favorable tax situation. Right. So when they leave, of course, their jobs go with them. Right. And so it's a very difficult situation right now. It's unfortunate. It's basically, basically in the, uh, the large cities uh, because the provinces, you know, they grow wine. Right. Uh, they, grow, they make parmigiano. They make products that, that are sold here, in, in not only here, but in all countries Everywhere. of the world. So the provinces aren't doing too badly, but this, the inner cities are suffering right now. Yes, that it's, was unfortunate. It, and so do uh, any of the young people, um, or the people in that age group you were mentioning, the 30s, um, is there any place else for them to go, let's say in Europe, or, um, to find employment? Or? Well, they do try, but there, they, but there isn't that much in, throughout Europe. So they, um, I mean, it's not that Italy is unique. Right, no, Spain I know the whole Greece European economy is The whole uh, European economy, so it's unfortunate. Um, uh, tourism is still a uh, you know an important part of uh, Italian uh, economy. Right. And thank God for our, our ancestors like Michelangelo and Da Vinci and and even the Vatican. The Vatican has a huge influence on the tourism for for Rome. Sure. So we have all of that going for us. But well, uh, and I would think in in that respect, Pope Francis would be a big, <laughs> an even bigger draw than. Than popes usually are, right? He's a because, superstar. Yeah, exactly. He's, yeah. A He's like a rock star. Uh, yeah. The week that I left, uh, his audience in Rome was so huge that you just never, uh, if you saw it on TV, you never saw the end of it. There were just so many, many. people there. So he's a huge, uh, a huge attraction right yeah, now. Yeah, he's, he, he's a fascinating figure. I mean, I guess you could say all popes are by, by virtue of their position alone, but um, he's a very contemporary pope, to say the least. He's a very 21st century pope. I would say so. Yeah. Well, he's had a lot of experience because he's from Argentina. Right. Um, his father's family is from Asti, which is, at, if over I may get over, up, over. it's right around here. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. In Piemonte. Okay. Yeah. And actually, his mother's family, which I don't think a lot of people know, uh, I read when I was in Italy that they're actually from Basilicata which is down here. Near the boot. Yes. Yeah. But uh, so he has an interesting perspective. He's also quite fluent in the language, which makes a big difference, you know. Yeah. Um, not only does he speak Spanish fluently, but he also speaks, uh, well, what do they speak in Argentina? Is it Portuguese or I Spanish? Think, I think it may be Portuguese. Yeah. yeah. But, they all, but he's also fluent in Italian, so he relates very well. But he just has a huge audience. Right. And he's done a lot of very unconventional things. Yes, yeah, know? he certainly has. Like he has, doesn't yeah. live in the same part of the Vatican that all the previous <laughs> popes lived in. He lives in a, oh, really? a, one of the how, mission houses uh, in Rome. And a, a unique person. So right. uh, people can relate to him. And uh, also in Italy, I, I know you, you were telling me that um, they, <laughs> not unlike some of the very hotly contested political issues here, uh, have some issues with uh, immigrants, right? People mm -hmm. coming in, in this case from Africa. Y right? Refugees. Uh, refugees, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, when you were there, w what was the talk, for example, about Ebola? Actually, it was just starting. Yeah. It was just starting the talk about Ebola. So I got home before all of that 
uh, really flourished, broke. yes. Yeah. Although uh, there were delays in airports and there, were, uh, there was a lot of confusion. It was not as pleasant. The, the actual the journey, airports? the yeah. airports were right. not as pleasant an experience. Well, they are, they are not anymore like they used to be. No, that's They used to that's be able sure. to sit yeah. in an airport right. and people watch from around the yeah. world. Of course, now you don't get that anymore right. because you're in a, a, a separate space with just your flight. So, but there was a little bit of confusion. We had a two and a half hour delay, but um, it's, um, it's a very unique experience, but you have to have a little bit of patience going through this now. Uh, you have oh, no, I know. I mean, I was, you, know, you know something? I don't travel nearly as much as I used to on business. I used to go to L.A. virtually every other week. But uh, I, I am somebody who does not complain about the security. I'd much no, rather no. they have the security Absolutely. they have and that when I'm sitting on a plane, I, you know, I could be as uh, confident as possible that Absolutely. things are just going to be uneventful. Right. Um, but the reality is... There's no such thing these days as getting to the airport too early. No. You, you could think it's really early, and you still, I find, barely have time to get something to eat yes. by the time you, you go through the security. Mm -hmm. I mean, the lines are just unbelievably it's like long. like herding cattle. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, and it takes, it like, takes a very long time, again, for good reasons. Yes. I mean, yes. you know, you do want to make sure that they're thorough. But, um, you know, I had, I had traveled quite, uh, as I was just saying, frequently before 9-11, and boy, you could draw the thickest of line before and after 9-11 of how air travel has totally changed. Yeah. It's just nothing like it used to be. Um, it's just unfortunate that that's yes, the world we live in. Yes, it's unfortunate, yes. yes. Yeah. But it was a wonderful trip. We had a very good time. We, we tasted a lot of wine. Uh, we went to a number of wineries. Uh, we usually concentrate on certain areas, although we always go back to Barolo, which is in Piemonte, because that's where our family lives. So... You know, it's close to home, so we always go there, and it's a wonderful experience. I mean, if you travel by car, you see uh, just miles and miles of beautifully well-kept manicured vineyards. Uh, you can't distinguish one from the other because there are no fences, there's yeah. no border. You just see these incredible clusters of grapes that you just want to get out of your car yeah. and sit there and eat. Right. And, and uh, we've done that too, <laughs> Rocco and I. Uh, on our last trip, we were in a fig grove, and we, I said, no, I'm sorry. I don't care if I get arrested. <laughs> we're going to get out of the car, and we're going to eat some of those figs. figs. <laughs> hey, why not? <laughs> but you know, yeah. um, it's a wonderful experience, and you realize what, how important these products are to the culture of these towns or cities. Yes, right. They're, they're really, everybody in the city or in the town is involved in some way, shape, or form with what they grow or what they produce. Right. Like Parma, uh, which produces so many great Parmigiano Reggiano, Prosciutto uh, pa alla Parma. I mean, just a lot of things that, uh, that they are world renowned for these particular well, products. Well, that's their industry. Right? That is their that's industry. That's their local industry. That is their yeah. local industry. And thank yeah. God that Italians will, I, I think, hopefully always eat well. Right, <laughs> yeah. It's a very important part of their day. And, and the rest of us, even. Even if we're not Italian, we'll always eat well if we eat Italian. Yes, I can tell you yes. That. I love Italian. It is always the most popular food I find wherever yeah, I go. No, that's, that's, so. Yeah, that, that's very true. Yes. It, you know, also, I just want to, um, before we move further away from talking about the uh, wine tasting fundraiser for Hudson Valley Hospital that will be at Trump on Trump National Golf Club at uh, in Briarcliff on Thursday, November 21 from 6 to November 9 p.m. November 13th. Oh, you know something? I'm sorry. You're right. I'm looking at a different... Uh, yes. Yeah. I'm well, looking at... <laughs> Thursday night, November 13th. November 13th. I was looking right. at last year's. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thursday, November 13th, not yeah. 21. Because there is no Thursday, November 21 this year anyhow. Um, but I want to make sure people know how they can order tickets. Yes, right? absolutely. And they can go to the uh, website, um, which is hvhc.org, mm -hmm. HVHC Hudson Valley Hospital Center. So it's HV. HC.org, and if you go to the website, you'll find uh, a section of it where you can order tickets online. Yes. Um, for the wine and dine mm -hmm. around the world. Um, It'll be from six to nine. Yeah, six to nine p.m. Six to right. nine. And um, if if you like wine talk and if you like to sample wines and love good food, right. It's just a wonderful place to yeah. uh, to get together. And again, just to make sure, I repeat, 
It's Thursday, November 13th, Thursday the 13th uh, at Trump National Golf Club. Uh, and speaking, going back to speaking about Italy, that is, um, I know Rocco, your husband, yes. um, has quite his own personal right, history mm, yes. in Italy as a a soccer star for the national team. Wasn't he on the national team? Uh, he or, was or in the junior national team. Junior national, yes. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, um, and, but he was a standout player, right? He was yes, he played for 14 years professionally. And uh, he was very well liked by his fans. And if you read some of the newspaper articles that are archived now, uh, you will, that's always mentioned is uh, his, the, the, how a, Fans had a real affection for him. Oh, really? For because he gave so much on the field yeah. of himself, and they really appreciated that. So he's uh, he has left a wonderful legacy. And what position uh, did he play? He was a, de a, a defender, right? Uh, a terzino, which is what they call it in Italy. But he was a, a defender that became a wing. It, that that whole theory of become going from defense to becoming a wing was formulated really in that era and and he was one of the people that was able to do that because he was fast and he could run for a very long time so he became at one point uh, uh, in one of the games he actually scored a goal even though he was a defender Fender, right. and that's all in these articles that you and I discussed that are now being uh, now archived in uh, in Italy well you told me that the website is La Stampa La Stampa right, right. right. L A S T A M P A dot com. Right. When I went to it, by the way, at first I said, <laughs> when I looked at it, I go, oh, reminder uh, to Bruce's brain, you don't speak Italian. <laughs> but, then I, but then I realized there is a section of it that's in English. Um, so you, you know, so yes. if you want to go, it's interesting you to, to La Stampa. The, you have to go to the archive part of it. Well, and is that in English? Uh, oh. I don't, I saw it uh, in Italian. It yeah, right, be. that's what I mean. Right. Uh, yeah, the, a lot of a lot of it obviously is in Italian, uh, as an Italian newspaper. Right, right? right. But there are some sections that that are in English. And then you're also telling me that if somebody, and this was fascinated me because you don't necessarily think about going back decades, video being that readily available, um, especially you know if it wasn't like a, a global sporting event right. like the Olympics right. or the um, the World Series or, or Super Bowl, but that. Rocco can be seen right on video still if you yes. look at look uh, or look up YouTube. Right. Um, and so, what would somebody look for? I, you have to know the game. You oh, okay. have to know the match right. and the year. I believe. I mean, this is really not my field. Right. I, I do right. wine. I don't do tech. Right. But, but um, I did see it when I was in Italy. Entire games. Oh wow! Uh, yes, and my uh, my children, I believe, have uh, sat and watched. Uh, his games, so it's uh, really an incredible thing. When, that I, is, when I when you think of the fact that my mother came to this country when she was 14 years old, never saw her mother again. I mean, they everything they did was by letters. Right. They wrote to each other, but h here now this is available to my children and my grandchildren, who can sit and watch their grandfather. Yeah, I know that's what I know. That it's is amazing. Am it's, it is amazing. It, that's yeah. the wonderful it's great. part. That's yeah. the great part of technology. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've always felt. But so I actually, uh, I've been involved in video for many decades from the very beginning, when VCRs uh, first were introduced. And I remember writing about how, you know, imagine. And so I'm going back now, well over 30 years. Um, who would have ever imagined that a uh, a, a young uh, child, let's say four or five years old, um, and think about this going forward, could actually be seeing their great grandfather, yes. who had, who in fact had passed away Amazing. before they were around, but talking, you know, virtually talking to the great grandchild. But and I think it has to somehow affect um, your sense of self. You know that you can, as 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 we proceed, and the video exists. You know, at some point it's going to go back a century or more that you'll be able to do this, right? Oh, yeah. You'll be able to see your great, great uh, grand yep. uh, parents and things like that. Um, that it, it actually changes even human behavior to an extent, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Yeah. I think it it promotes such understanding yeah. of people's Where you came from issues and, yeah. and their background. And unfortunately, most people don't know uh, where they came from. I mean, they, they might know the country, but they really don't know the culture. So this is a wonderful opportunity. When I come back, I can, when I get back every year, I can uh, call my, my nieces or nephews and their children and 
uh, there they are on Skype. I mean, they see me, I see them, and we're talking and chatting. Right. So yeah, it's exactly, really, it's yeah. a wonderful thing. It's yeah. a wonderful, and when used properly, it's a wonderful thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and it would be an interesting exercise now that we're talking about it, and I'm thinking about it, that it, it, you, you, you wouldn't even know who you're talking to because the, the human being uh, who is your descendant hasn't even been born yet. You know, it sounds like a science fiction I movie, know. like Back to the Future or those yeah. things. But, but I think people should consider just videotaping something where you're talking to this unknown descendant um, you know, it, it really is, uh, it's really fascinating It's fascinating, it's fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so, what is, I don't know if I'm going to put you on the spot, Rose, what is your favorite mm -hmm. wine? Well, generally, I drink wines, my husband and I drink, well, we drink wines from all, all over Italy. We basically drink Italian or Southern French wines because that's our culture. Right. That's our food, that's the way we eat on a daily basis. So, of course, being, uh, having family in Piemonte, in Torino, which at one point was French, right. uh, it was part of the House of Savoy, right. uh, there's a lot of French influence in the cuisine there. And that's the northwest uh, Yes, yeah, corner. yeah, that's under France. Corner, yeah. What we did this year is we concentrated on Trentino Alto Adige, which is right here, right? right? Yes. And that's under Austria. Right. So if you go to Trentino, they have wonderful wines, soft, velvety, mellow reds, and great whites. Um, they, if you go to a restaurant there, you're going to see the menu is going to be in German and Italian, and in, in some right. cases, English as well. So there's a, a different influence there. Why is there a different influence? Well, they can't grow basil up there. It's too cold. Right. So you have different types of dishes. Like in Piemonte, you have a lot of rice dishes. They probably eat more rice than they do pasta because that's where they grow the arborio rice. Oh, the risotto, isn't the risotto, it? The risotto, risotto, risotto yeah. was, right. was born there. Uh, but in other parts of Italy, which all are wonderful, the food is wonderful any place in Italy, um, you will find different recipes with tomatoes and basil and things of that sort because they have the climate to grow those, uh, those products. So it's, uh, I don't know of any place that you can go to that you won't eat well in Italy. Right. Uh, whether it's a... You mean, a, you mean restaurant? Is a that, restaurant, yeah. a, or, a stand or, someplace, right. or a, a truck, or whatever. You're going to eat something delicious wherever you go. Now, now the other, because we only have a, about a minute left, but the other big question, which, you, which applies to any, um, you know, any food that is served in the U.S. under a certain label, uh, and how it compares to the actual food in its native country. How does American Italian food compare to Italian Italian food? I mean, and that's a broad question. Well, it's a little different. Uh, most of the American cuisine is, is Southern Italian food because most of the large immigrations came from the south of Italy. Abruzzo, for instance, where my family was from, right, right, right here. There, right. Uh, and uh, so that type of cuisine carried over to this country. We have wonderful Italian food in New York. Yes, the, best, yeah. the best cannoli in the world are in Sicily right. or in New York City. Those are the two places that right. make really good cannoli. We don't make good cannoli in, in Torino. Right. <laughs> we make other pastry that's very good. In, in Veneto, by the way, here, right. they're, they're famous for their tiramisu. So there are so many products that we eat on a daily, weekly basis that right. actually come from Italy. Right. And everybody, so. of course, when they hear the name of that pastry can't help but quote the famous line from The Godfather. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. <laughs> so, so we'll end on that note. And we want to thank Rosemarie Panio from the Foundation Board of the Hudson Valley Hospital Center and chair of the upcoming Wine and Dine Around the World Wine Tasting and Food Tasting Fundraiser, November 13 from 6 to 9 p.m. at Trump National Golf Club. Go to hvhc.org to order your tickets. And believe me, it'll be well worth your while and the value far exceeds the price of the ticket i can vouch for that and thank you for watching frank talks with bruce the blog remember when bruce the blog listens people talk thank you